Uh, thank you for having me, firstly. Uh, I'll take you through a, a bit about my journey, uh, as well as uh, what it means to be in the field of sports administration. Uh, but a bit about myself, I'm a Bangalore boy, born and bred. Uh, loved, loved being back in India for the last year and a half, sh uh, seeing our city expand. Like this area didn't exist about eight years ago probably. It wasn't this developed even with the roads outside. So it's been about absolutely amazing uh, to go back. Sorry, one slide. Uh, what is sport management? I just wanted to quickly talk about that. Uh, for me today, after coming back to India, it's almost like the new engineering. We've got about 30 universities suddenly come up and everyone's teaching sport management. Uh, for me, it's completely different. It's just another industry which is coming up with the same skill sets in a different environment. You could be a lawyer, you could be a financial professional and still work in the sports industry, right? And I'll go, I'll dive into that with a few stories which I've learned along the way as well. Choosing a career path as well is something which is stressed upon a lot, I feel. Uh, I never chose my career path at a young age. I actually let uh, my surroundings dictate that for me. It was never that I wanted to work in sport, but today I am working in sport, which has been an absolutely amazing journey. Early passions for sport. Uh, as a 90s kid, bought and grown up in Bangalore in the 2000s, uh, cricket was life. We played on the streets, we played in the fields close by, and that's all I knew from a very young age. Uh, but also started playing a lot of football, basketball around as well. Uh, and eventually, I had days where I did have friends to play the sport with. Uh, and that's when I started reaching out to people on those days, a social media platform called Orkut, uh, where we started reaching out and organizing tournaments uh, where I could basically just for my benefit to go play sport. That's all it was. Uh, and that's when my interest of creating tournaments and matches across my society spread. Uh, but at the same time, I was still very passionate about playing cricket. Now, remember this, that into the 2000s, India was a cricket-playing nation who never won. We made it to the finals, but we never won. And here was this young teenager, or even younger, who thought could change that. Uh, and I wanted to win India the World Cup. That was the dream, right? And I started going into professional coaching, started playing cricket across the... Uh, state and even the national level eventually got picked up uh, to play for the state of Karnataka for a very small period of time uh, before it all came crashing down in a split second and I had to stop playing cricket. I did shift to a different sport called tennis which became the love of my life. Uh, it taught me a lot of things which cricket didn't because cricket remember was a team sport where tennis was an individual sport, completely different aspects uh, of life, right? Just a few points to touch upon in terms of leadership. We talk, I genuinely believe that sports is probably the best teacher out there because it teaches you things without you even realizing. Uh, when I was uh, playing cricket, we had a, a team of 11 playing players. We had another seven people in the squad and about another 150 people who wanted to be where you were. Right? So this was our reality and making sure that at least 30 of us were communicating with each other and doing the betterment for our team became almost the most important thing, not the performances on the pitch. It taught me communication, it lent me to understand what other people are feeling in a certain moment and most importantly what sport has taught me today is understanding people which I don't think a lot of things teach you because sports just starts giving you that exposure to so many people from various uh, backgrounds that you understand why someone's probably performing well. It's not to do with skill, it's not to do with talent, but it's about how they're feeling in that environment. And I started picking up on those skills very, very uh, early in my days, which really helped me communicate better, go into leadership positions very easily, because while others were figuring that out, I was there already. Uh, and I took confidence from that. And that's where the personal growth comes in because it gave me the confidence to speak up for my friends uh, who became family in a sporting environment. It taught me to speak to myself when I was losing tennis matches for no odd reason because I had no one to blame here, right? From cricket to a sport where I could blame someone to tennis that it was only me on that court. It taught me the self-resilience and just to go along with it. Uh, the jumping into the world of sports administration. So 
I was uh, never your 90 percenter, not even your 80 percenter to be honest, maybe the early 70s. So I was playing sport professionally uh, till my 12th grade in Bangalore and then completely gave up sport uh, because of three surgeries and about 18 fractures in four years. I just couldn't play anymore. It was my doctor telling me that if you get one more ankle injury, you probably won't walk. Uh, this basically led me to joining a university for my undergrad where the importance for me was not my education because throughout my life I believed I learned better outside of the books. Uh, and I joined a university called Jain University CMS where the class timings were four hours a day, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's it. Now who joined this university? People who were usually wanting to pursue their careers in their businesses who had ideas to create entrepreneurial ventures, or people like me who genuinely didn't like studying and wanted to do something outside it, right? So it took me a few months uh, after, the, after finishing work, uh, sorry, my classes at 11 o'clock, I used to rush back to where I used to coach uh, as a tennis player uh, for eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds, and eventually that role grew into me creating tournaments for the organization. Uh, and suddenly, it's, I went from someone who just used to come on court, play a few matches, go home, and that's it, to organizing events, which involved going to corporate partners for funding. So for any event to take place, you need money, right? Where's the money coming from? So that taught me to actually put myself out there, have a chat with people, understand what they're ready to spend and what they're actually getting out of it, which I probably didn't think of when, at the age of 19. I just wanted to play sport. Whereas this whole experience of three years of working completely opened up my eyes of commercial activities, grassroots development, the new buzzword in our industry. What is it? It's basically having facilities out there so people like you and I can participate. People, a six-year-old can still have the facilities even without having the money. And we were doing that as an organization. This basically grew an interest for me that I finally found what is my calling. Uh, and I wanted to continue doing it. Bear in mind, we're talking about 2015 when I graduated. The Indian Premier League was only seven years old and everyone working in that industry was from outside India, barring a handful of people. There was universities which were coming up with not too much expertise and that's when I decided to make the big leap uh, and go to Australia, uh, Deakin University, to Melbourne, probably the capital of sports in the world. Uh, I did my master's there, I uh, did a master's in business, specialized in sport management. Still coming back to the same point I said, that sports management was a byproduct of everything I've done. Because I went for an MBA with a specialization in sport management and combining my love for sport in a city, in a country which lives sport. And that was my journey, that's how my journey started at Deakin University in Australia. Uh, very different... Uh, academic culture in Australia, where I, as an MBA student, I had 16 hours of lectures in a week, and luckily my lectures were 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So basically, I had the whole week to myself. Now, what do you do as a 21-year-old in a new country with everything in the palm of your hands? It's, it's distracting, it can be intimidating at the same time. Uh, but I was pretty focused on what I wanted to do, luckily that I delved into volunteering across sporting organizations. And when I talk about sporting organizations, it's about that tennis or a cricket club which plays on mud surfaces right outside my university. I gave my volunteering time there just to understand how their culture of sports works. Because what I knew from India was very different to what was happening in Australia because they were a developed sports economy and we still aren't. This eventually led me to make my first big uh, step. A first big decision apart from moving to Australia was uh, six months later in December, I got an interview with the Brisbane International. Now bearing in mind I'm in Melbourne, I've got an interview at Brisbane International, a tennis tournament where I've volunteered for four weeks. Now volunteering is unpaid guys. Everything, your flights, your accommodation, everything is on you. I made my way to Brisbane for four weeks over Christmas, so I've given up my holidays with friends, etc. Go there and work in their communication center, the event communication center. Now, this turned out to be probably the best decision of my life because 
I didn't know that I was coming into a communication center where every department which works for the event will be speaking to us. And as a 21 year old, I suddenly understood what sports administration is. Because I was speaking to commercial, partnership, grassroots, activation, fan engagement, ticketing, content production. And these are just words, right? But this is the reality. This is what it was. Uh, four weeks, 14 hour days, we were probably heading back at 12 a.m. at night, back at 6.30 in the morning, but probably the best experience of my life. At uh, that stage, I was on the top of my world. I got humbled so quickly, it was unbelievable. How many of you guys know Roger Federer? He was our marquee player at the tournament. We all expected him to easily win. He makes it to the finals, it rains, the match gets delayed by two hours, comes back in court at 10.30 p.m., loses, loses the finals, and we at 1 a.m. are packing up, finishing. I was supposed to fly back to Melbourne the next day. We get a knock on our door at 1 a.m. Roger Federer walks in, saying, guys, sorry, but I've got a commercial obligation to sign 150 tennis balls and 200 bandanas. Can you guys please help me? We are talking about Roger Federer, probably the greatest ever athlete at 1.30 after losing, coming, sitting on a round table with four people he does not need to care about, speaking to us about our lives and our backgrounds, till 3.30 a.m., completing his commercial obligations, but making us feel like we are the most important people in his life. Now, this is an experience which has still stayed, stayed with me. And hats off to the man, right? Who does this? So this was a small anecdote from that experience, which basically opened up my life. Come, just touching quickly on the diverse roles where I spoke about ticketing content, I'll quickly speak to you about a few of my key points. I'm a ticketing manager where we basically ensure that you as our customer can go online, within a few clicks are able to purchase a ticket, a week before an event, get an email saying, listen, this is your ticket, and make sure that your experience is completely enjoyable. The big break happened at uh, Cricket Australia, the biggest cricket organization in Australia. Uh, I got super lucky. I was at a different interview. I looked up LinkedIn and I had a message from a manager there saying, can you come and interview for us? Uh, I joined Cricket Australia one month later uh, as the lowest ranking member of the organization where we were literally being at reception, making sure our meeting rooms are ready. Uh, but at the end of the day, within three years, through a lot of hard work, perseverance, uh, I made it as the ticketing manager of uh, the MCG. Now, MCG is a 100,000-seat stadium. It's now the second biggest after the uh, stadium in Gujarat, but at that stage, it was the biggest stadium in the world. And I was a ticketing manager for that, so I was dealing with corporates, governments, etc., which was almost a testament for me to the work which I'd put in for the last five years. Uh, lessons and learnings. I think in any industry, it's about how you can learn from your people around you. I was the youngest member of that team right there. This was after the biggest bushfire we had in Australia, where we had the likes of Sachin Tendulkar, Yuvrat Singh come and play matches for us to raise money. We sold tickets by hand for the first time in Australian cricket history because of the demand, and we made over $100,000 for the bushfires in Australia. Now, that whole experience completely elevated what sport can do for a community for me. Uh, transitioning, so COVID hit you guys, it hit me there as well. Uh, I was in Australia where we were closed for two years. My radius of movement was two kilometers from my house. Right? Uh, I was made redundant, luckily Cricket Australia and the relationships I made picked me up for another seven months and I transitioned into content production. I became a producer of uh, content for them as a project manager. Eventually, uh, at the start of last year, I decided to move back to India. It had been eight years and four months later, I was very lucky to get involved with the Qatar FIFA Men's World Cup where I went for seven months. Uh, being one of the only Indians around in a non-IT field was daunting, challenging, but at the same time, super exciting. Uh, did that for seven months, came back to India, worked for the first time in my life in India, uh, in the Indian Premier League with Rajasthan Royals in Jaipur. Uh, the hardest experience of my life, because 
I was used to working abroad. I didn't know how it is to work in India. So very hard experience, but one of the most, uh, I would say the most important le lessons of my life will end there. And then while the IPL was happening, I got a call to go back to Australia for the recently concluded Women's World Cup, which has changed the landscape of women's sport across the world. We had sellout stadiums in every city we went to. Uh, and now all these experiences has led to basically the global aspect, uh, the Euro 2024 in Germany. Now being a freelancer and working across events, having a network, I'm off to Germany on Wednesday uh, to work for the next nine months at another football event there. So this is small things of what an industry which I didn't choose got into a network which has helped me grow has taken me to. Just lessons quickly. Passion fuels motivation and commitment while dedication ensures the necessary effort of perseverance to overcome challenges. Now this quote was from a mentor of mine, which has still stayed with me, it is probably the most important thing. So if you can always have those two together, you will never be let down. Navigating challenges and seizing opportunities. I was just talking to your uh, friend earlier that never say no to any challenge, even if you don't know what it means. Do it. If you don't like it, get out of it. But learn how to do it first. And continuing the growth in the sports of administration field was, it's evolving, right? Uh, the next the next generation, which is you guys, for the next 20 years, 30 years, India is right up there. We are getting every tournament here and it's growing rapidly. But at the same time, the power of sport is changing. The Gulf is here, Saudi Arabia is here, Dubai is here. Keep an eye out, Keep be informed of what's happening around you so that you guys can make the change in any field you guys are part of. Act upon career and life ambitions. I'm, very, uh, I'm a very practical person, but at the same time, I'm ambitious as well. Uh, take the leap of faith. If you think you're a coordinator, apply for that manager level role. It's okay. It's okay to do so, to get rejected, and then know how you can get there. Don't ever uh, say no to an opportunity. And find your why. My why has always been that sports is the only medium in the world which unites communities in any given way. There is nothing else, whether it was COVID, it was a world war, it was the great flu. Sports is one medium, we just got the community together. That's my time, thank you, and thank you for having me.